Hello grade sixes, welcome back to today's installment of the BFG. Hopefully everyone has uh, some big plans for the weekend. Um, hopefully the weatherman is wrong, it says rain, but you just never can be sure. Uh, I would just be most excited if the wind didn't blow. That would be just fabulous. But anyways, let's get going on the palace. Uh, if you didn't answer your questions yesterday, that tells me you're not listening to the videos. So, if you are listening to the videos, then you know I'm going to ask you questions while I read. Sneaky, sneaky, I know. Here we go. The palace. By gumdrops, whispered the beef, or, sorry, the big friendly giant. Is this really it? There's the palace, Sophie whispered back. Not more than a hundred yards away through the tall trees in the garden, across the mown lawns and the tidy flower beds, the massive shape of the palace itself loomed through the darkness. It was made of whitish stone. The sheer size of it staggered the BFG. But this place is having a hundred bedrooms at least, he said. Easily, I should think, Sophie whispered. Then I is boggled the BFG said. How is I possibly finding the one where the queen is sleeping? Let's go a bit closer and have a look, Sophie whispered. The BFG glided forward among the trees. Suddenly, he stopped dead. The great ear in which Sophie was sitting began to swivel around. And if you didn't get that question right earlier this week, go fix it. She was riding in his ear. It swiveled around. Hey, Sophie whispered, you're going to tip me out. Shh, the BFG whispered back. I is hearing something. He stopped behind a clump of bushes. He waited. The ear was still swinging this way and that. Sophie had to hang on tight to the side of it to save herself from tumbling out. The BFG pointed through a gap in the bushes. And there, not more than 50 yards away, she saw a man paddling softly across the lawn. He had a guard dog with him on a leash. The BFG stayed as still as a stone. So did Sophie. The man and the dog walked on and disappeared into the darkness. You was telling me they had no soldiers in the back garden, the BFG whispered. He wasn't a soldier, Sophie whispered. He was some sort of watchman. We'll have to be careful. I is not too worried, the BFG said. These waxy big ears of mine is picking up the noise of a man breathing the other side of this garden. How much longer before it begins to get light, Sophie whispered. Very short, the BFG said. We must go pell-mell for leather now. He glided forward through the vast garden, and once again Sophie noticed how he seemed to melt into the shadows wherever he went. His feet made no sound at all, even when he was walking on gravel. Suddenly, there they were right up close against the back wall of the great palace. The BFG's head was level with the upper windows, one flight up, and Sophie sitting in his ear, had the same view. In all the windows on the floor, the curtains seemed to be drawn. There were no lights showing anywhere. In the distance, they could hear the muted sound of the traffic going round Hyde Park Corner. The BFG stopped and put his other ear, the one Sophie wasn't sitting in, close to the first window. No, he whispered. What are you listening for? Sophie whispered back. For breathing, the BFG whispered. I is able to tell if a man, human being, or a lady by the breathing voice. We has a man in there, snortling a little bit too. So they're trying to figure out, he's saying, I can tell if it's a man, human being, or a woman, human being. He glided on, flattening his tall, thin, black, cloaked body against the side of the building. He came to the next window. He listened. 
Nope, he whispered. He moved on. The room is empty, he whispered. He listened in on several more windows, but at each one he shook his head and moved on. When he came to the window in the very center of the palace, he listened, but did not move on. Ho, ho, he whispered. We has a lady sleeping in there. Sophie felt a little quiver go running down her spine. But who? she whispered back. The BFG put a finger to his lips for silence. He reached up through the open window and parted the curtains ever so slightly. The orange glow from the night sky over London crept into the room and cast a glimmer of light onto its walls. It was a large what? Sorry. It was a large room. A lovely room. A rich carpet, gilded chairs, a dressing table, a bed, and on the pillow of the bed lay the head of a sleeping woman. Sophie suddenly found herself looking at a face she had seen on stamps and coins and in the newspapers all her life. For a few seconds, she was speechless. We'll end there. And... Uh, I will read the rest of that chapter to you on Monday. Alrighty, guys and ladies, have a good weekend. Talk to you later. Miss you.